Today's video, I got a drill four aquariums that are filled with water and up and running for the water change system. We'll be using a diamond coated hole saw and some one inch bulkheads. But like I said, they're filled with water and actually up and running as sumps right now. I need to drill holes probably right around here, just one inch hole all the way down in each tank. Now I could drain these, take them out, etc., etc. But I've done this so many times. However, usually when you drill an aquarium, you're usually drilling it face down so you can actually apply water to the hole you're drilling so the hole saw doesn't get too hot and you prolong the life of this. So this is going to be pretty interesting. One of the first things you need to do when drilling an aquarium though, we want to make sure that it's not going to burst into tiny little pieces. And if you don't know what I mean, tempered glass, if you try to drill it, is going to shatter. So we need to make sure the tanks are not tempered before we touch them with the drill. So you only really need two things. One, you're gonna need a phone screen or a laptop screen, something along those lines that can display a white screen. Something like this. This is just going to help reflect light. Now you can do this without a phone, but it's not nearly as accurate. Then you need some polarized glasses. Now if you don't have polarized sunglasses, you can use those 3D glasses that you'll get at a movie theater. In fact, originally when I showed you how to do this years ago, we used uh, glasses from a 3D movie theater. Cheap, you get them for free when you go to the movies. So if you need to drill a tank, go watch a 3D movie and keep the glasses. Before we actually get started though, we need to create some control subjects. One, we need to test this on a piece of glass that we know for sure is not tempered. Then we need to test it on a piece of glass that we know for sure is tempered just so we can actually see the differences before we go trying this for the first time on the aquarium. This is an old door. It's the front door to my house. I know that this piece of glass is definitely not tempered. Yours probably isn't either. Let me show you what a piece of tempered glass looks like before we look at one that's not so you can see the difference. So I know for sure that my driver's side door is tempered glass. And in fact, yours will be too if it's been made within, I don't know, the past 10, 15 years. So knowing that this is tempered, I'm gonna know exactly what to look for. So if we take a look at the corners here, this is kind of the best area to do this in. Um, but if we put the polarized glasses in front of the lens here, watch what's gonna happen. You don't really see much, do you? It all just kind of looks the same, just maybe a little more uh, sunshaded. <laughs> But what if we put the foam behind it with a white screen and put the glasses on? You see what just happened there? Let me get even a closer look. Take the phone away. Look at the corner, top corner. You see that? The rainbow effect? So it shades on, a little bit closer, even better. You see that now? Isn't that, isn't that bizarre? Look. Okay, so maybe you don't have a car window or maybe your tank doesn't have an edge like this. This is one way to see is the corners or bevels. Tempered glass is always really smooth as well. But if you go near the edges, you'll see that rainbow effect and I'll explain why in a moment. But if you're just looking through some basic tempered glass, watch this. Watch what we're looking for here. Do you see the lines? See the lines on the phone? It's not the phone, it's actually the glass. So I can follow one. It's everywhere. You see that? Isn't that crazy? off and they disappear. Try this again with a little bit more light. See the lines on the phone? That is due to the manufacturing process. Uh, these are the rollers that actually went over the glass and you can see the lines there, right? Now the reason this is working. You see tempered glass scrambles polarized light. So if we're putting a light through here and polarize it, it's going to look scrambled and we're going to get those imperfections in the glass. Regular plate glass doesn't do that. So we should try this and make sure. Now again, I know this is not um, tempered because I already tested it on I, uh, a known piece of tempered glass. We'll try it on this and we'll see the difference. This is what we want our, our aquariums to look like. Phone behind it and put your glasses on. Now. Ideally, you would just wear this normally, but look, none of those lines are in it. No rainbow effect, nothing. But that's an old door. Most of them are tempered these days. So if you don't know for sure, if you have a um, fridge with glass shelves, those are tempered. Your microwave door is tempered. Usually the plate inside of it is tempered. But this is a more modern door, probably only maybe five, 10 years old. So again, white screen behind it. Try the tempered glass effect. See the line right there, right in the middle of the phone. Bam, bam, it's all over the place with this one. 
it's insane, isn't it? Now some will say turning this phone or the glasses sideways, it'll give you more dramatic effect, something to do with the angle of the polarized glasses. But you see that? Take them off. I'm just gonna darken this a little bit so you know it's no camera trick or whatever. Doing those tests are entirely important and a must, you must do it. Even if you've done it before and you know what to look for, I suggest you still test because maybe you forget what it looks like or it's kind of different, etc. Make sure. So now that I know for sure, I can go ahead and drill those tanks. I need a water source though, so I got a little bottle that I can squirt water out onto the drill as needed. Now I do not suggest you drill your tanks like this. Uh, I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh Joe, you recommend not doing it, but you do it yourself. That's because I have the experience in doing this hundreds of times. You see, what I suggest you do is you actually turn your aquarium up on its side so you can drill down into the hole because you're gonna wanna use the pressure of, or the weight of the drill to actually drill the hole. This way is going to be a lot more tricky. I'm not gonna be able to use the weight of the drill. I'm gonna to have to do it based on experience. I'm also not going to use any template like I've shown you before that makes drilling holes so much easier. But if you gotta do it, it's still possible. And I'm gonna show you how. I plan to drill six inches below the lip. So what I'm going to do here is measure six inches down and over here. This is where I want my water level to be. It's at about the six inch mark. Now the placement of the bulkhead, we don't want to put it right in the middle of the line or right below it or right above it. This is a, an emergency overflow uh, or a drain for when we're doing the water changes. We want to put it directly above the line. That means that the water will stop flowing at this line and that means it's at the bottom uh, entrance of this bulkhead. I'm also putting it uh, over to this corner because eventually we're gonna turn these into fish tanks and I'll plumb them and I'd rather have the bulkhead over to the side where I would typically plumb as opposed to in the middle or just out uh, wherever. So all of them will be over to the sides here. So I'm six inches down and uh, you wanna give yourself at least a half inch between the, the, the uh, flange of the bulkhead and the lip. Here, look. So you see what we marked here. This is gonna be six inches down. Uh, and then of course, how far over are we going to want to be? Probably by at least a quarter inch, a half inch. Uh, this is just going to give the flange some space and uh, being able to tighten that bolt. But uh, that should be perfect right about there. So a little trick I do is I take the, uh, the, the nut off of the actual bulkhead here and I figure out where I'm going to want it placed. The inside of this is actually the same dimensions as the, uh, the neck and the outside is the same as the top flange, so I'm killing two birds with one stone. One, I can see how much distance I'm giving myself over here, plus two, I can actually see where the bottom of that is gonna be. So I'm thinking right around here is where I'll want it, just like that. All right, <clears throat> so I know exactly where I wanna drill now. All I've gotta do uh, is I'm gonna have to continue to wet the bit, the bit here with a little bit of water, maybe even the that made no difference. But uh, we want to start at an angle. Watch, just like this. Now once we have this groove in here that you can see, we're going to slowly lower the bit. This is dangerous for me stopping and going for you guys to see this, but uh, maybe I'll explain it in a minute. And there you have it. Not a bad little hole. Now believe it or not, this is far safer than it looks. Once you start getting the groove in there, there's no real worry about the tank cracking or shattering for a simple reason. And that is because circular shapes don't have any specific stress points. If we were cutting a square in there, definitely all the corners is where it's going to, to, to be the stress areas. And you can take a piece of sandpaper and, and rough this up so it's a lot softer if you want to. But I live on the edge. I need to cut myself every once in a while to make it look like I'm busy. When installing a bulkhead, you want the gasket on the inside of the aquarium. Also, I got that uh, diamond coated hole saw. It sounds way fancier than it is. You can get them on eBay for a couple bucks, Amazon, wherever you want. Really affordable. And that's it. Now I can put a elbow in here to drain into a drain or whatever I'm doing next. And then with these tiny little glass things, I like to make little um, pendants for chains on Etsy if you want to follow me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> now I got to repeat the process three more times. 
So repeating the step three more times, I'll just be repeating myself more and more. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I gotta move on to some other plumbing issues, but I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I figured uh, since I did this many, many years ago, I'd circle back to it and show you guys again for those that haven't seen that type of information and showing you how to drill a tank. This is a very crude manner. I don't suggest you do it like this. And once again, I know people are gonna say, why are you showing how to do it if you don't do it yourself? I hate that you do that. Again, it's just a difference of experience. I've done this many, 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 many times and I'm just showing you how I do it based on that experience. However, I've got a really good video that I made years ago that uses a template and the glass and everything's positioned properly. Uh, make sure you watch that if you haven't already. I'll leave a link in the description below. Kind of cringy, but it's good information. I'll see you guys in the next video.